we've lived on this side of the sound for the last 18 years, and for about 14 of it, I've traveled back and forth for work in Seattle, and I'm very fortunate to have a good position in Seattle, and I like my job very much, but the commute adds a couple of hours a day to my day, and any change to that that would reduce that it would really be a benefit to me, um, and I'm sure it would be a big benefit to young families, uh, people with children either in school or at daycare. I'm one who would look very much forward to having a shorter, shorter ride. A uh, 30-minute trip across would be wonderful. Passenger-only ferry service actually dates back to the 1800s, to the days before automobiles and even roads in Puget Sound. But by the 1930s and 40s, the car ferry had become the norm and passenger-only service the exception. Today's modern jumbo and super ferries are marvels of scale and technology and can carry over 200 automobiles and 2,500 passengers on a single passage. However, the auto ferries are not particularly fast, making the trip from Bremerton to Seattle in about an hour. Many residents and community leaders in Kitsap County have long been interested in fast passenger-only ferry service. In addition to increasing access to jobs, shopping and recreation opportunities on both sides of the sound, there are other good reasons for leaving our automobiles at home. High gas prices, wear and tear, congestion, parking, and added CO2 in the atmosphere. So an old idea from the days of the Mosquito Fleet has been revived with a new twist, the fast passenger ferry. The Washington State Ferry System initiated fast passenger service nearly three decades ago with the MV Tyee in 1986, the MVs Kalama and Skagit in 1989, and the MVs Chinook and Snohomish in 1998. Cruising at up to 37 knots, these fast-moving boats cut the Bremerton to Seattle trip in half, down to 30 minutes. This quick trip was popular with both commuters and cross-sound visitors. However, these attempts met some serious challenges. There were the usual bugs to work out with the newer technology on the fast boats. But a major challenge became apparent as residents began reporting damage to shorelines and bulkheads along Ridge Passage. Responding to concerns about damage caused by the wakes of the Snohomish and Chinook, Washington State slowed the speed of the fast ferries through the passage, reducing wake damage but greatly increasing the travel time. Fast ferries clearly lost their speed advantage. Then the service lost a crucial funding source provided by the motor vehicle excise taxes. So Washington State Ferries made the tough decision to get out of the passenger-only business. So the question for many community leaders was whether such a service was still viable. The answer became clear. To sustain fast ferry service through Bremerton and Seattle through Ridge Passage, a thorough understanding of wake impacts in confined waterways such as Ridge Passage was a critical first step. Recognizing this, the state of Washington set out to find a research team that would help them understand the impacts of wakes and Ridge Passage. In 2005, Kitsap Transit assumed the responsibility for the research project, and since that time, through federal grant assistance, we've been able to provide for the ongoing study of the beaches, wave patterns, vessel wakes and designs, and ultimately building a very low wake, high speed passenger only vessel. This vessel optimizes uh, low wake, uh, fuel efficiency, and speed. A thorough understanding of the forces at play required extensive research monitoring, collection and analysis of scientific data regarding the impacts on the geology, the shoreline, property owner structures such as the bulkheads, and the marine ecology of the area. Well, high-speed ferries create a distinctive wake, which is quite different from the traditional car ferries, which you can see behind me, in terms of the type of energy that's created. The fast ferries, once they get up to a certain speed, will create wakes that have a certain amount of long period waves. These are waves that are longer than uh, the, the wind waves and car ferry waves that usually hit the beach. And the longer, the longer the wave period, the farther the waves can propagate 
and transmit energy when they reach the shorelines. So the beaches in Ridge Passage are mixed sand and gravel beaches, which are somewhat unique. They're not the most common beach type, and so they have completely different dynamics than sandy beaches. So the long period waves caused by the fast ferries tend to cause the gravels on the beach to move offshore, and that results in flattening of the beach. Finally, there are a lot of structures in, the, in Ridge Passage which have had an effect on the sediment supply, and over the long term that has resulted in a reduction in sediment available for the beaches. Well, I think it's exciting, and I like to watch it go by, but uh, I, I think we have to take care of the beaches too, and I don't know how they're going to do that. So the Ridge Passage research study involved five essential elements. The first was physical and biological data collection which fed into a numerical modeling study where we developed specific models that allowed us to predict and to assess the effects, potential effects of a fa fast ferry operation and compare it with the natural processes operating on the beaches. The third element was the selection of, of candidate vessels that would be suitable for operation through Rich Passage and then the, the design and optimization of those vessels. So the research program which started in 2004 was instrumental in influencing the design of the vessel itself. This was followed after the construction of Ridge Passage 1 by a full-scale testing program so that we could understand the wakes from Ridge Passage 1 and then further understand their potential effects on the shoreline in comparison with other processes. And finally, a most important element of the study was communication. It doesn't have any propellers at all. It's water jet. It's more the whole shape and the foil. So it's a foil-assisted catamaran. Rich Passage property owners have made key contributions to the research process, sharing valuable insights during the numerous informal meetings at beach walk events held on both sides of the passage and via open forums at property owner meetings at Port Orchard, Bremerton, and Bainbridge. You know, the, the, how the beach is cared for and how the marine life is, you know, surviving or thriving or not is important. We, you know, we like the fast ferry. I wish Bainbridge could get one. Hopefully it'll, it'll work, and uh, if that's the case, it's better for everybody. Having better commute options will bring young professionals to the county and more students and better opportunities for people in the county. This one actually makes me ride my bicycle more because I can't uh, cheat and take my car. I use my extra time with my children. I get about two extra hours a day with them when I ride the fast ferry. This is an exciting time for the Wake Research Project. Years of intensive data collection, analysis, modeling, and testing are now coming to conclusion as the research team completes their report on the final beach response test phase of the project. While the science team was collecting their data, Kitsap Transit officials were gathering and analyzing other important data for evaluating future ferry service operations, including ridership patterns, rider comments, and their input. Now that we've completed the test project through Rich Passage and the research is nearly completed and the results showing that it is within the seasonal variations, our next step is to develop a business plan working with our board and the community so that we can have a sustainable passenger-only operation. This unprecedented research project has advanced the scientific understanding of wake generation through the development of new modeling tools that can be applied to confined bodies of water all over the world. These new insights will also provide Kitsap Transit, local leaders, and concerned citizens with the information they need to identify the best options for sustainable and environmentally sensitive fast passenger ferry service through Rich Passage.